my thought is that we, we one group has uh, will tell us about what their conclusion is on one question, and then we have another group uh, very shortly opponenting or in some way tell us their their view of the same thing. And now I don't have any questions left because someone has told them. <coughs> That's bad. So perhaps we have the questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and that was only two questions. <laughs> I need some more questions. Thank you. Okay. So. And we need uh, microphones in front of you. So I, I said to no group number one, uh, could you tell us about uh, question number one, currently technical areas like ET sensors, technology, and el electrical components in general receive a very high attention. What is your view on the need for technical progress within other technique areas like, for instance, mechanic, material science, and energy efficiency? And group one, who is group one? I think the first question. Um, my name is Bergson, is my name. Uh, well, we had a discussion about this, and I think all the group was uh, in the same direction about that there is really a need for uh, a second thought about the mechanics. Uh, and we were discussing mostly the mechanics actually, and, uh, and you have to also view different way of work, uh, but you do system analysis of how you do things, not just make an uh, adoption of your uh, uh, fertilizer uh, in the existing techniques, and you have to review uh, the mechanics, and uh, that also makes a uh, change for uh, in the uh, sort of the innovation system, we have to, to get back to, to the basics, as we said, and make some new innovations in the system thinking that was uh, lagging behind with it. And also about uh, somewhat the, the interaction between the universities and the technology development, there is also needed for a closer cooperation to make this happen, at least in the Swedish area. Good. Thanks a lot. And uh, if you go to group number two, what's, uh, what do you agree or disagree? What do you think about uh, their answers and what's uh, your answers? Which is number two? Shall I try? Yes, try to. Okay. So uh, you mean comments about the, the question number one? Do you agree with the uh, group one or do you have another? Uh, conclusion. Well, uh, generally, w we could list quite a lot of areas besides electronics that were important. Uh, for example, uh, aerodynamics in uh, the functioning of, of, of machines. Uh, we are now talking about uh, not the aerodynamics while going uh, fast, but the aerodynamics in, inside the pneumatics systems, for example. And we talked about steel materials uh, development. Hard metal. Uh, we also talked a lot about uh, kind of not education, but how to instruct uh, people with advanced machines. But we try to not uh, focus on electronics, but of course, electronics and digital technology can be inter, uh, can be part of, for example, uh, new concepts of uh, how you learn to optimize a certain machine. Something more you want to add, the members of? No. That's good. Exactly. And the, the guy who told us that was Per Frankelius. You didn't say that at all. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, is there any other thoughts about the number one? Okay, that's good. I have a, I have a definite favorite I would like to take away, and that's the PPU. <coughs> it's dirty. It's too tight, uh, and it's very hard to get on uh, PTU fix. But <coughs> and that's coming because all manufacturers work with heavy electrification. That's good. <coughs> I like that. It's not made for two meter men to be uh, try to get the PTU on. <coughs> so, so I have. Accident feature. 
Good. Then we have uh, question number two, and uh, the question is, the technical development is fast, but the response from the green sector in putting the new technologies into use is something rather slow. What are the main reasons, obstacles behind this, and how can the technology transfer rate be increased? I don't even know if they agree, uh, but uh, group number three, what do you say? Pair or any other? I don't know. Uh, well, one one uh, ob obstruction uh, is probably the structure of agriculture in a way. Perhaps less uh, less so in the forestry, due to the big span between the big companies and the small farmers in agriculture. And. Um, <coughs> We also discussed uh, a lot about uh, the need for standard standardization or common solutions on how to transfer on the data use, really. How to use it and how to make sufficient use of it. That, I think we discussed a lot about that. And uh, we also discussed a bit about uh, platforms and about uh, that perhaps the forestry might have something to learn the agriculture businesses. And we talked about these open arenas where we could use... I was in the group, but it's not that much. You, you. You, you, uh, you can talk a little bit about that as well. The need of an open arena. Yes, we need to talk about the need of an open arena for uh, Common data use or to exchange data use the data on this area. Uh, today, a lot of manufacturers, mechanical manufacturers, unless they are John Deere or GIA or Delaval, they try to create their own arenas for because they need the data really for developing their their products. While the farmer have a more need for uh, using the data for his company development. And that is a different type of need. So you need to have some sort of um, perhaps like 365 or some other arenas where you can meet and collect data. Yeah, good. Could uh, group number four, what do you think about this question? And do you have any solutions or disagreements or anything? Matt? Yes, we uh, go by Steve. I uh, think group four. Uh, okay, it's two group four. <laughs> Sorry. Are you group four? Are you group four? Five. Five. Four. I said four. <laughs> okay, man. Okay, that seems as an agreement. And we can see group and the question is four problems, or not? But what we saw, we are not. Yeah, I don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so we, we don't have anything to oppose against uh, the answers we had, but what we would like to add, what we discussed, was uh, that we think that uh, advisors, advisory uh, services to the farmers is uh, of importance. Teach at agricultural schools uh, and their equipment so they are ready to use the new technology. Usability, costs uh, for the for the uh, technique, and um, we we have been talking about that the, the importance of uh, easy transmission of the, the results uh, that are collected to the different systems, and the ownership of it. Uh, we like that. Uh, at least I I I realize that now. We like that uh, the farm owns the uh, results. Not all companies that accept that. Uh, well, and then cheap uh, digitalization of old machines and simulators. As, uh, there is one project then in Westerötterna, Sim Gordon. So, do you any, any all of you know about Sim Gordon? Sim Gordon is a really interesting. Perhaps you should tell us about it because it's, I think it's a very, very good way to tra train and learn and educate uh, young people into agriculture. And it's yeah, definitely a, project. a genius uh, project as well. 
Uh, it's a project uh, founded uh, or founded by uh, how did everyone how do you say the paint by uh, Vinova, the uh, government agency, and Naturvårdsverket, I believe. Uh, it's about simulators for the three agricultural schools we have in Västergötaland, uh, run by the Västergötalands regionen. They also on the project built a trailer where you have three to four stations, uh, so you could use the trailer wherever you like. Uh, last week we had the, uh, it's connected to the Interact project Agrovest is running, and uh, last week we had the one simulator with us at Agromec. Uh, you have uh, combines, uh, John Deere, and you have uh, tractors, you have uh, forestry machines. And they um, add, so, uh, add um, uh, services, what, uh, what can I say, services, well, to also uh, drive the machines on roads, because the students also need to know that, as you know, you can have like 60 tons uh, load, and you need to know how to handle that. So it's a good project. I think it will be expanded by time and development. It's a very good project, and, uh, especially because usually on the farmer schools in Sweden, the boys standing in the front and they always drive the tractors and they screaming and uh, yelling and they are uh, world championships and the girls standing beside. But now in this project, it's shown that uh, the, the young women are more, much more skilled to drive the forest uh, machines or the combines or so because they practice a lot and they're really good uh, working with it. But that was a, a little big anecdote. It's, it's, you, can do, you can use it a lot, of course, uh, and they can also do it on their spare time, or free time, on the evenings and so on. They just book a time, maximized to a certain extent of minutes or hours for each, so you can do it on the clock. And uh, since we work with it a little bit, uh, I can say also it's some of the manufacturers of this machine, for example, tractors, uh, usually when you buy a new tractor you have a half an hour of uh, instructions from uh, the seller how it works and then he goes <laughs> away. But here, uh, for example, John Deere, they have uh, two days. Now they have, an own, uh, they have their own um, simulator and they have uh, two days possibility to train uh, all the electronics in the, in the machine. And that's really good because then the farmer knows about his own machine. So it could be a way forward. Okay, and I, I don't really agree with this question number two, because I think, especially in animal production, I'm an animal geek. Uh, I think the animal production has come one step further than, in my opinion, uh, uh, precision crops. But that's my opinion. Of course. Uh, and then we have question number three. What is the last 10 years most important technical and digital innovation which has given the biggest positive impact in practical farming forestry in Europe? And we talk about management systems and farm and animal production, working in the environment and environment. So I ask quest, uh, root group number five. What do you say? So, now it's my turn then. No, it's your turn. Okay, my name is Hugo Westlin, I'm a farmer. Uh, we discussed uh, picture an analysis as one of the most uh, important technical innovations. Uh, just so that you can uh, analyze his methods, um, you can sort the weights to pictures, photo pigs, etc. by picture analysis. So that's uh, what we discussed uh, quite quick for, for this innovation. Yeah. Yeah. What's the possibilities for, for the future? Would that be something new? Do you have any ideas? Uh, well, well, what we, uh, Eva Olsson, I'm also a farmer. Um, what we were discussing in, in this subject was that developing um, a different kind of uh, services to each. You don't need to buy your camera for picture analysis. You can do leasing, you can pay by picture, by by succeeded picture or whatever, which they do like in, in when they're detecting mastitis. Uh, I think that kind of services is, is that must be the, uh, the, the future. Pack it into something that's usable for us, that we can pay for. Absolutely, absolutely. So then I turn to group number one. What do you think about uh, the answer? What do you think? 
For example, minus. Do you have any objectives? Mats has. I got the. Come on, sorry. Mats Tygson, Kalen Group. Uh, when we looked at uh, some uh, things which we think is important to the ISPOS, both for um, forestry and uh, for, uh, agriculture, so that's an important innovation. Also, the section control and auto steering of tractors has been uh, what we came up with. And uh, I think the consequences of that is uh, you have a better precision, efficiency improvement. Uh, in the forest, it's less monotone and less fatigue for drivers, for example, as it was uh, mentioned before, and also cost saving, hopefully. Uh, that future five, five years is a very short time uh, in the future, and uh, we are already in our company looking at 2027, by the way. But, uh, it continued integration now, I think that's what it is. New te technology comes, but it needs to be integrated. So they know what, how to use it and to reach the benefits. Good, thank you. And that's about it uh, during the first three questions. And then uh, the, word, the question number four was make a list over three to five specific areas due to some farming and forestry where we can find big needs and great possibilities for technical and digital solutions, give concrete examples. And I thought it could be a good arena with the whole group. Do we have any ideas about that? I don't, uh, I don't turn to uh, one group, I turn to the whole uh, audience. You don't have to raise your arms, all of you. <coughs> There's enough with one. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, we discussed quite uh, uh, big things, big possibilities, so we need to decide should we, do, should we talk about big things, for example, to affect the weather, not only analyze the weather, uh, uh, control the weather. And uh, uh, there are solutions in China. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> for example. And um, so uh, if, if we back time 50 years, some of the technologies we see today they were not in the mindset of people 50 years ago. For example, the iPhone app system. So maybe we could see very, very new things coming in the, in the next uh, years. For example, to, to uh, handle the, the weather, not only looking at it. I think if, we, if, we, I, could, if I could uh, decide about the weather, we should have 20 millimeters every Monday and then good weather the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, why not? Could we could we have some fixed status? We really appreciate it. Make it as far away that or with what I would allow. Yeah, probably. Okay, more uh, more uh, influence on these uh, specific areas we need to change in the future. Yeah. Uh, Ole Lindus, uh, SLU in Umeå. Uh, I'm on the forestry side, so I have some, uh, yes, so some insights from the forestry side, and that is actually quite a bit to do with the human perspective. A lot of the driving forces to uh, jump on automation, for instance, is because there is, for instance, a uh, lack of labor, there is a uh, need of increased safety, there is a need of more interesting and stimulating work and those kind of things. So I think that will be what is actually will drive these advances, at least in forestry. And the digitalization we see, that is some of the things that gives us information about what is happening right now. How are we doing the operations? And that gives us the base for analyzing how it could be or how it should be done. And then we can take that to the educational side. And we can use, as for instance, simulators. We've been using forest machine simulators for a long time, but in a very unstructured way. So the forestry schools, they have had the simulators, and the students, they have had the possibility to learn how not to break the machine when they sit in a real machine. But now we can use the simulators to actually train them to do the work also, to do the silvicultural work. How should we do the forest operations? What trees should we harvest? What trees should we not harvest? Where should we drive, etc.? 
So that is something too that can also be developed because of instrumentalization. So I think most of these things that would actually have a great input would be on the human side. It's a little bit contradictory, but it would be on the human side in the beginning. Same thing with the remote operations. If we can have machines operated from an office together with colleagues, you will have a much more attractive workplace, much more general neutral workplace, etc. So many of these things I think will be coming in the future. And then the rest of the things, there will be many gadgets around, there will be technical development that comes just because of the fun of it. But I don't think that will be the most essential piece. Very good. But I have a complete other view of this near new technology. At the Albert here, we hosted uh, over 60 um, influencer and, and uh, blogger at our booth. And my thought after this visit is our technical, techni uh, digital data, what we have, can we give to the community, to the citizens of our countries, more information, hard facts, with this, to come, to come back in a real good communication with them. Not only about that uh, blue, uh, white and black, so then here's the facts, let's discuss about. In my private, when I discussed about what we can do and what we do today, they're very impressed, but I can only reach not everybody. <laughs> so we must look for this blogger and deliver them data about what we do today. Cool. More? I have to go back to what you said about humans and uh, to train them. Uh, we uh, had heard today that uh, from, Peter, for example, Peter and from Inca that the experience from a farmer, we can never uh, change it to technique. But now we have a new technique to actually train people in, in that way as well, in gamification. Uh, there is a lot of um, new ways to, to, to train and learn. They, for example, I have my wife, she works, she works with uh, surgery, and they train in gamification, in games, to, to make surgery. So I think we could train as a farmer and see what trees and see uh, seaweeds and such things as well. So, I think we have a lot of solutions there as well, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah, from just to start, yes. I could not know. Uh, I could think for the future that we have to return to the roots much more. We have jeopardized cr uh, the sequence, how we grow crops, uh, and there are many things to come. We don't use. Uh, catch crops very much here due to our northern uh, position, but that could be companion crops, that could be better tillage, that could be more deep loosening, that could be a lot of very, very basic things. And I think we have a quite big potential there. I could even think the potential is higher there in percentage of yield than within the digitalization. Maybe I get a few that don't like me, but I think that's the truth is my turn. <laughs> Probably is the truth, actually. <laughs> okay, uh, the time is... Uh, okay, one more question. One more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we also discussed the, the lack of qualified uh, labor in, in agriculture. In our group. But the last uh, thing we discussed was risk elimination. How could farmer eliminate a system to go bad? Uh, how can we get information about that. Let's say the translation doesn't work or uh, other things in our uh, barn so that we need to have control. Yeah. Risk elimination. Perhaps we need to go to Borås some months and look at the avatar. They uh, make avatars. <laughs> so you can have avatar in your stable to take care of the cows and stuff. No? Uh, okay. Uh, that was actually all for today. Uh, I hope you uh, have understood and understood that you are chosen. So we have, uh, we will send out some uh, information uh, from you. Uh, Stefan has promised me to send out uh, the files. Uh, we don't send it as a uh, mail because it's too many uh, uh, gigabytes <laughs> or megabytes at least. So we have a, we have a, we can have it as a file uh, and open.
come and see interesting things, parts of this uh, day. Uh, I uh, will send a grateful thought to uh, the Royal Acad Swedish Academy of Agriculture and Forestry for taking good care of us. And uh, of course, I would uh, have a special thanks to our lecturers for today, Magnus, Peter, Hinke, and uh, Klaus Herbert. And uh, a little anecdote actually about Sweden as a country. I think Magnus has had the same distances to travel this morning as Inke and uh, Klaus Herbert, uh, because Sweden is a very long country. <laughs> So it is give us a little bit uh, uh, thought about uh, how to use agriculture and forestry in different parts of our country. Okay, that was all for today. Thank you for coming, and don't forget that we have this typical Swedish afternoon coffee break down now in the in outside uh, straight there. So if you have time, take a coffee break and chit chat to each other. And I hope to see you somewhere else. Thanks a lot.